All right, I think we're going to get started here. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, my name is Greg Roberts. I'm the Vice President of Marketing with iControl Networks. I'll tell you about iControl here in a second and what we do and why you should care. As I was mentioning to some, to some folks earlier, I, some of these slides may be a little bit difficult to read, so please feel free to move closer if you, uh, you want to read, and I think these will be available later on at, at some point. Um, I was asked to sh tell everyone of three things, and I'll forget to do it at the end of the presentation, so I'll do it right now. That first, I'm supposed to let you know that you'll be receiving an email regarding the seminar, and you're encouraged to reply to say how wonderful this presentation was and all the other presentations that you've seen. Um, so you'll be getting that at some point in the near future. Um, also, for seminar certificates, You'll be able to log into the Attendee Resource Center to be able to print off a seminar certificate. If you need one today before you leave, I believe that you can go down to the registration booth and they'll print you out one if that is of interest for you. And then lastly, and most importantly, there's a seminar raffle. Um, so at the end of this seminar, you can pick up a raffle ticket for a chance to win a $250 American Express gift card. So now I know why everybody's here. I've just figured this out. Um, so please make sure that you pick that up. I'm sure the folks will be outside uh, when, when we're done here and, and uh, get you what you need there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I was going to walk through today was a little journey of the connected home. Uh, I was just talking to some folks here and, and trying to understand what is everybody's interest and, and what is everybody's knowledge of the connected home. And, and I can speak to a number of different things here, but I'll, let me ask a couple of questions first. How many people are familiar, or uh, how many people uh, see advertising for smart home systems uh, today? How many people consider themselves familiar with them? Okay, great. How many people actually have what they would consider a home automation or a smart home system in their home today? Okay, very few. So you're, everybody's learned about it, everybody's being exposed to connected home solutions, but very few, if any, have adopted them. Very interesting. There's a lot going on in this marketplace today. It's actually a very exciting time. Um, and while there's so much, there's so much advertising, so much uh, consumer education going on, and so much innovation happening right now, it's, we're just at the very beginning stages, and this is perfect proof. It's everybody's learning about what connected home and smart home solutions can do for them. Uh, they're learning about the price points. They're learning about all of what it can do from a consumer benefit perspective, but we're just at the very beginning of the consumer adoption curve. And we'll talk about the, the connected home at least from where we saw, uh, where we, we saw it maybe about five or 10 years ago where we think it is now and where we think it's going and what it's going to take to get us or get the industry to this next level, next level of mass market adoption. And you guys are all smart people and a lot of this will make a lot of sense as to some of the things that really need to happen so that everybody in this room will feel a lot more comfortable about buying a smart home solution from whatever entity that they want to purchase it from. So that said, um, talk to you very quickly about iControl Networks, just so that you know, iControl is a, plat uh, a smart home platform company. We develop cloud software solutions for service providers, home security companies, telcos that enable them to offer smart home or interactive uh, solutions under their own brand name. Uh, so we're that company that you never hear of behind a lot of these deployments. If you're familiar with Comcast, Xfinity Home Solution, Time Warner Cables, Intelligent Home Solution, all of those are powered by iControl software platforms. ADT Pulse, uh, Bell Alliant, and CenturyLink all run solutions powered by our, our uh, software. We just launched uh, a solution, uh, we didn't, a partner of ours launched a solution called Peak which was just announced that is the smart home solution being offered in Best Buy. So we now have a retail presence um, for our software solution. Again, you'll, the consumer name of it is Peak, but it's powered by iControl. Uh, and now we just, um, start, we just bought a company and are now offering a direct-to-consumer solution called Piper. 
And Piper is an all-in-one home security, home automation, and video monitoring solution that works right out of the box. Um, it doesn't require any setup or any assembly or whatnot. We're very excited about that product, and we think it caters to a market that the solutions from the service providers and home security companies don't cater to. I'm happy to talk about that a little bit more if, uh, if there's an interest there. So that's what iControl does. We, we, we really have a, um, a focus on a mass market, uh, on mass market solutions for every household in the world. So we were looking at, it, we're looking at the industry from a, uh, an end user perspective and providing solutions that enable these companies to offer affordable solutions uh, to their customers and again under their own brand name. So what is the connected home? I, I talk to a lot of analysts uh, and, and reporters in this, in this space, and there's, there's a ton of buzz going on right now in the connected home world. Is it, is it all about the connected devices, or is it about smart home solutions? There's a big difference, but they actually, they actually come together. Smart, uh, connected devices, everybody's heard of Nest. Everybody's uh, familiar with a lot of the door lock solutions, video solutions that you can purchase, you have an application, you can use them on your own, and they provide one, one what we would call a point solution. The, they, they provide one consumer benefit to the individual. Those are fantastic solutions, and they are a significant part of what is the growing market that is the smart home market. The other part of that are more connected solutions. Those are very similar to um, some of those that I showed you on the slide before, where a connected device isn't a connected device is connected to other devices and makes all of those other devices smarter in the home so now that you have a thermostat that knows that the, mo the, the motion sensor is telling the thermostat that somebody's there and that the thermostat can adjust itself automatically but it also works with the door sensor on the home, in the home so that when the door is open, lights will turn on automatically or video cameras will shoot video clips automatically. That's a connected home solution and it provides a host of more and more beneficial solutions to the end user or benefits to the end user because it can do so much more. And the beauty of that for the end user, it's a common user interface. I'm not having to go for one app to one application on my smartphone to adjust lighting and another one to adjust thermostat and another one to see live video. Now I can do that all on one application on my smartphone and a web portal or whatnot. And that's where we really see the value to the consumer. Most of the presentation that I've got for you today is about the, the smart home, the connected home solution that brings all of these connected devices together to really drive consumer value. I want to talk about the evolution of the smart home, if, at least from iControl's eyes. Uh, we, we've, we've been in business for 10 years now. We've been providing software solutions for that entire time. About eight years ago is when I started with the company, and we had a solution that was, we call it remote home monitoring and home control. It's very, very similar to some of the smart home solutions that you're seeing offered in retail locations today. Um, video monitoring, uh, th climate control, uh, home awareness, all of those features in, in one, one solution. The very first thing that I did when I got to the company is I took that to research. I wanted to understand what do consumers like and dislike about this solution because we got to figure out how to go sell it to the end user. And what was amazing is when we took it to focus groups, consumers clearly told us, I love everything about this. I love the ability to stay connected to my home. I love the fact that I can, that I can turn lights re on remotely. I love the fact that I can have my home manage itself. I can see live video of my home whenever I want to. I love that capability that all makes sense to me. And then we introduced price. Then we said, ah, oh, you know what, what if we charged you a couple hundred bucks for the equipment and maybe 10 or $15 a month for the service? We got this big pushback. We're like, I wonder what's going on there. And what we came to realize was, while there is a great appreciation for all of these home automation technologies, the risk of financial, of, of, of actually paying for it, was a big barrier. And what that was telling us was that the technology adoption for a consumer to take on all of this new technology was going to be greatly hindered because they, 
they realistically love it, but they just don't get it. And so it made a challenge for us in that how do you get this consumer to adopt these technologies that they want, but do it in a manner of which is much more comfortable to them. One of the other things we heard in this research was that a lot of these smart home capabilities kind of seem like they're home security oriented. The ability that w when the front door opens, I get a, a text message that says somebody's entered my front door, or I get a video clip of, of who entered a room sent to my, my phone. It, those, those provide a peace of mind that, that a home security system also provides, but in a different manner. And that was one of the catalysts for us to say, maybe the best way to bring the smart home to the consumer is to layer it on top of something that they're already familiar with, which is home security. And when we took that concept to market, it made total sense to the consumer. What it, what it ended up being was that I love these smart home solutions and I love how you are layering on top of something that I'm already familiar with. Whether I've adopted a home security system or not, I love the fact that you're making it a better solution. You're providing more value to me in addition to this peace of mind value proposition that I'm going to get with a monitored home security system. And that was, at least from our perspective, a, a, a major revelation and that's how we started to redevelop our software platforms to take all of this great functionality but to, to, to amalgamate it into a security solution and at, assuming at one day it may split apart again and you may have uh, smart home solutions over here and home security systems over here. But that's what consumers told us is what, what they really wanted in a smart home solution. And that is what has turned into the mass market smart home deployments today. How many people, um, how many people ha uh, see Comcast uh, Xfinity home commercials? How many people see ADT Pulse commercials? So what you're seeing is they have, a, they have turned these offerings into mass market offerings and they are heavily promoting them in the marketplace now. And these solutions include some type of security, whether it's monitored security or non-monitored, uh, if self-monitored or what we call uh, home awareness security. They include remote home monitoring, the ability to see live video of your home or set your system to shoot video clips when things occur in your home so that you're informed and you can see things that are going on when things are going on. Home control and home automation, the ability to have your home manage itself. Very simply, lights turn out automatically, thermostats or climate changes automatically depending on behaviors and depending on how you interact with your home. Energy management, all of those things that I was just talking about, but optimizing a system so that it can decrease your utility bill by anywhere between 10 and 25 percent. And home health care, this is somewhat of a new trend for the smart home, but adding home health care solutions on top of some of, these solutions, some of these smart home offerings in the marketplace makes a ton of sense and it broadens the target audience for the smart home um, in a number of different ways. So what we, we said is, if this is the market today, where's the market going? What, as a software company or as, as a technology company, what do we need to be prepared for? And so what we did is we went back to consumers in a research study that we conducted the latter part of last year. And we asked consumers about a whole bunch of different types of features and functionalities. And we, you know, if this is the marketplace today, what other things do we need to add on? And what other categories do we need to accommodate in order to provide more value to the end user? There's a ton of stuff that, that came out of that research, and I'm going to give you a, a resource at the end of this presentation to go download that you can read some of the highlights of that research. But the one key thing that came out of that that was the biggest revelation to us, if you look at the whole connected home and smart home world and all this technology and all of this new stuff that's coming out in the marketplace, was that safety and security are absolutely critical in order for consumers to adopt a smart home technology. It was very, very clear to us based on the consumer input that we must continue to drive this peace of mind value proposition 
with smart homes, the industry needs to, not just, not just our company, but the industry needs to continue to drive the peace of mind value proposition in order to continue the mass market adoption phase of the smart home. 67% said that personal safety and security is the number one feature that they need in order to adopt a smart home solution. 90% said that safety and security rank as one of the top or one of the most important reasons for smart home adoption. But I think the most compelling thing that we heard in the research was that 100% of the respondents, this is a national survey, this is not a couple of people, this, this is a national survey with about 1,000 respondents. 100% said a smart home solution that doesn't provide some level of personal safety and security is not acceptable and will not drive adoption for that particular individual. That's a significant learning for us. And, and again, it goes to what's driving mass market adoption today. I don't, know, I don't know if it's because of all of the service providers and home security companies promoting smart home solutions as home security solutions with, with uh, home automation and home control technologies, or if it's just um, it's another dynamic in the marketplace. But the reality is that that's what the consumer thinks about with regards to, con to a smart home solution, and that's what they expect when they look for a smart home solution uh, or home automation solution specific for their use cases. So if that's the market today, and, and we're convinced that, that, we, that the market has the technology and the um, uh, the different use cases to drive mass market adoption. How do we get from this beginning stage of adoption, which is really on the left side of this graph, to where the industry says we should be at a $71 billion industry in the next four, three to four years, which I think is from a Juniper research study. We think that the market is, is, is going to have to go through a breakout zone, if you will, or a, um, a, a, a discontinuous event that a lot of other industries have gone through that is going to have to, that is, it's really required in order to jumpstart this next level of growth for the industry. What this breakout zone is, it's an, it's an amalgamation of high consumer value and what we call a frictionless experience. I'm going to talk about frictionless for the next couple of slides, so stay with me here. What I mean by frictionless is taking the barriers away for the end user to adopt smart home technologies. Make it easier for them to add use cases to make their own smart home solution the way that they want it without having th this experience that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation where I've got one application that controls lights, another application that controls thermostats, another application that controls video. How do we break down those barriers to make it easier for a consumer to build and amalgamate a solution that best fits them in the most painless way possible? That's what we mean by a frictionless experience. Let me give you an idea of what we're talking about. And I hope you guys can see this in the back. The video game market back in 1995 had grown to about a $2.6 billion industry. It really peaked out there. And the reason it peaked out there was if if a lot of anybody like me back in 1995, if you went and bought a video game, it was absolutely painful. First, you had to go find a store that had a bunch of video games. When you got there, you hoped that they had the video game that worked with your computer, your type of computer, your operating system, the video card that you had in your computer, the RAM that you needed in order to run the software, the joystick, all of this stuff were friction points. It was an absolute pain to go find that video game. And then what happened? The console came out. PlayStation and all of these others came out and made it a very, very frictionless experience. Now when you go into a store, or since 1995, when you go into a store, you see a PlayStation game, you automatically know that that works with your console. It's made it very, very simple for the end user, and you can see adoption skyrocketed. It was a 17x market gain, took the, took the market to $44 billion in 2013. How did it do that? One, compatibility, which I just talked about. It was really, really simple to go buy a console and know that any of those games will work on your console. 
And two, price. It was easier to develop games. And if it's easier to develop games, you have more developers developing games. And when you have a bunch of games on the market, it drives pricing down. It was the perfect scenario, the perfect storm for that industry. And they continue to, um, uh, to, to benefit from this particular event. Another very similar um, uh, scenario that happened in the marketplace was cons cons uh, computer software. Again, in 2000 it, it, or 2006, it was about a $3 billion industry. And, it, and you went through the same thing with buying com computer software. You went to a store. Did it work with your operating system? Did it work with your computer? Did it support all of these other things that you needed it to support? It was an absolute pain. And, and half the time, you couldn't find that right solution. It was, it was a very, what we would call, friction experience. And then Apple introduced the, uh, the uh, Apple Store, the App Store. And it made it very, very easy to go and to, to buy software for your computer. It took that industry up to a $37 billion industry and is still growing. How it reduced friction was one, discovery. It was so simple. I don't have to go to a bunch of stores. I don't have to search a bunch of sites. I can go to a store. Any one of those software solutions in that store works with my computer. Very, very easy. Price, again, very, much easier to develop because it's a standard uh, it's based on some standards that's easy to develop to. A lot more developers, a lot more competition, pricing went down. And billing, I already have this billing relationship with Apple. It's really easy for me to click a button because I know I'm going to have to pay for it. Again, I don't have to worry about do I have to pay a monthly fee for somebody here or do I have to uh, accommodate a method of payment that I'm not really interested in doing via credit card or whatnot. I've already got this relationship, and it makes it really, really simple for me to purchase. Those are perfect examples of what's happened, that what happened with other industries that needs to happen in the connected home industry. How we look at the connected home is that there's about seven degrees of friction for every connected home use case. What do I mean by that? For every use case, there's discovery, how do I find out about this solution? Do I, have to, do I have to look for an advertisement? Do I have to go online to find it? How do I find out about what this can do for me? Management of that use case. How do I use it? How do I learn how to use other parts of this solution? How will it work in the future? How will it change in the future? What resource do I need to, to, to find to be able to figure out how to manage that? Set up. Do I set it up? Does an installer set it up? Is it an amalgamation of both? Support. Who does the support? Is it a support center? Is it online? Is it some, working with somebody I'm not familiar with? Is it working with somebody that I'm already familiar with? Price. Is it a monthly, rec monthly fee that I have to pay? Is it a one-time charge that I have to pay? Is it, uh, could it be a little of both? Could it, could it be a subsidized model or, or something for this particular use case? Billing, who, who do I have the billing uh, arrangement with? Is it somebody I already do business with? Is it somebody I want to do business with? How is that going to work? And then experience, about the user experience. Was it not just about the user interface, but also about the hardware experience. All of those are friction points that the end user has to go through when they, today, in the, in the connected home industry, when they want one use case. And to give you an idea of why this is a problem, Let's take home security, for example. Home security has its own seven degrees of friction, right? We talked about how does, how does um, the smart home, how has it evolved to date? Well, it's evolved to date because the core of all these smart home solutions is based on home security. But when you add other items, let's say smart lighting and home awareness features, you've added a whole new set of friction points. A whole, new, a whole new set of friction points that the consumer has to go through in order to add use cases to that smart home system. You want to add more, more friction points. You want to add more, even more. The consumer won't go through this. They won't, have, well, they won't go through the process of, of getting a smart home solution by having to go through all these friction points every time they want to add more features and more functionalities onto their solution. It just won't happen. And that's what's hindering growth in the connected home space today. And that's what the industry has to address to really get us on this hockey stick um, consumer adoption that I was showing on the earlier slide. 
when we as an industry can take those friction points out, then we're going to see that same hockey stick that we saw in some of the other ecosystem um, markets that we talked about before, the, the video market and the, uh, the consumer software market. We need a low friction experience to really jump the growth of this. And what we mean by that, back to my earlier slides, is uh, of these seven degrees of friction, any time as an end user that you add a new use case to your smart home solution, the nth use case is just as easy and just as familiar as the very first one. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that in a second. But that's, if you, if you have a smart home solution and you want to add climate control, it should be very, very simple for, for you to be able to find that solution, be able to add it to your solution, and it should work exactly like some of the other items that you have as part of your smart home solution. If it doesn't, you're adding friction to the marketplace, you're adding friction to the buying experience, and that's what's hindering consumer adoption. How I control, and I'm not, I'm not promoting the company, but to tell you how we're addressing it, to give you an idea of, of why some of our platform solutions are driving uh, mass market adoption through a lot of these service providers, how we address friction are a couple of ways. One, we have a program called the iControl Open Home Developer Program. And what that is is a program where we invite hardware manufacturers and application developers to come to us, join our program. We give them software development kits, device development kits. We give them everything that they need to develop to our platform, which is based on open standards and, and open architectures. And once they get certified, then they now have a solution that is, that is a frictionless addition to any one of those platform solutions that are being offered in the marketplace today. So Comcast, Time Warner, Cox, Rogers in Canada, all of these companies that are offering these solutions, they can now add those devices it's the exact same way that they would have added, they could add that device the exact same way that they had, had added another device. Our job is to certify them and to make sure that they work on those platforms correctly. And when they do, then our service providers can offer any one of these applications or any one of these devices to their end users however they see fit. It allows them to customize their solution however they see fit. Um, it drives innovation because there's a lot of innovation happening in the industry that we want to take advantage of. But that's something very important to us. We have about 100 certified devices out in the marketplace today. We have another 60 or so in the queue. Um, in the certification queue now, and there's a lot of activity around there that we're very, that we're very pleased with, and we think that that's a critical part of growing the ecosystem in the smart home, in the smart home um, industry. And the other way that iControl addresses friction in the marketplace is through our channel partners. What's a, what better scenario for adoption of a smart home solution than if you're a Comcast customer? and you want Xfinity Home, you already have a relationship with Comcast. If you already have Xfinity Home and you decide that you want to add climate control or lighting control or video to your solution, you already have the relationship with Comcast, you already have the back-end support that uh, Comcast offers, you automatically know what they offer and, and what options that you have. When you receive any type of equipment, that equipment, you add it to your system exactly like you did the set of equipment that you got from them a month before. It's a very seamless, very frictionless experience for the end user. ADT Pulse, when you have an ADT Pulse security system and you decide to add video monitoring to that, it works exactly the same way it works you get a video camera and you know how to add that to your system because it's very simple to do. It's already set up for that platform and the consumer doesn't have to worry about, gosh, am I going to have to worry about this or that or does it connect right or do I have to go through a whole new different setup or whatnot. It's all a seamless integrated solution that makes it very easy for the customer to add more use cases to. And that's the one thing that we constantly learn from consumer research for those that have adopted these types of solutions. When I, get, when, I, when I get a solution for one purpose, climate control, uh, video monitoring, 
I almost always add on top of that. I almost, almost always add more value to that solution because I can. And, and that, I know that that solution will solve a number of different purposes for me. And so I want the, I want the ability to add on to the solution because I'm familiar with it. And again, I don't want to have to go to five different applications for five different use cases. That's what the beauty is of, at least from our perspective, of having uh, telcos and cable companies and utilities offering interactive services like this because it makes it very easy for the customer to adopt them. One last slide and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take some uh, questions if there are any. I mentioned before that we, had, we did a lot of consumer research on um, what do consumers think about the smart home, what types of features and functionalities are they interested in adopting and so forth. If you go to our website, which is iControl.com, um, uh, we have a, a, a report called the 2014 State of the Smart Home Report. It's free. I urge you to go to the website. It's in the, um, the Insights blog section of our website. And it gives you a, a good seven or eight page overview of what that research told us. And it's, it's, again, it's fascinating to learn about what consumers, A, find interesting in today's smart home, what they expect out of the smart home in the future, and, and how they think the industry is going to go, at least from, uh, from, innovate, from an innovation perspective in the smart home. Really, really neat stuff, and uh, we, were, we were, again, very, very interested in learning about this, but there's a lot of it that I think that you'll find, um, you'll find insightful. That said, I appreciate your time very much, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Or you just guys want raffle tickets. Yes, sir. Great question. Um, so what we have seen in the market is, uh, is a couple of different scenarios. I'll pick on Comcast for a second because they're one that offers uh, a portfolio of, of smart home solutions. Comcast offers two products. They, call, they offer Xfinity Home Secure and Xfinity Home Connect, I believe are the terms. Xfinity Home Secure is their first offering, which is a monitored home security solution with the ability to add interactive services on top of that. They charge um, anywhere from 30 to 40, well, I should say 30 to $50 for that solution, depending on if you're a triple player, quad play customer with them or so forth. Um, so they're, they're, in general terms, charging the customer two to $300 for the equipment. They're charging them $30 to $50 a month for the solution and incorporates monitored home security, a life safety solution on top of all of these other home automation and home control solutions. They just introduced about a year ago a solution called, uh, as I mentioned, um, Xfinity Home Control, which is all of that stuff but without the monitored home security solution. And that's a trend that we're starting to see in the marketplace today, which is very interesting, because if you remember the very beginning of this presentation when I was talking about the product that our company offered eight years ago, which was a, home, a smart home solution that didn't have monitored home security to it, consumers were like, I won't adopt it because I just don't understand it. It's too much of a technology leap for me. But now, today, with consumer education that's happening in the marketplace, you're starting to see more of an acceptance to that. I totally disagree. It's not consumer education that makes a difference. What's that? What is? It's these things. Smartphones? Absolutely. Oh, they played a major role. That, There's is, that is why an un, a self-monitored solution is practical, because now someone opens the door and you see it almost in real time. That absolutely plays a big role. There's no question. Mm -hmm. and, and so what's happening is you're starting to see a lot of retail smart home solutions pop up in the marketplace. I mentioned one that, that's powered by eye control, which is the Peak offering in Best Buy. But there's smart home solutions in Lowe's and Home Depot and, and um, uh, the, some of the uh, office supply stores and so forth. Uh, so there's a lot of options there. And I think you're going to see you're going to see now that the consumer, 
in my impression, in my terms, now that the consumer has become more educated on all of the home automation and home control features, you'll start seeing more of a plethora of offerings out in the marketplace, and you'll see different ways that consumers adopt these. It, it, I believe they charge like nineteen dollars, fifteen to nineteen dollars for that. So it's probably I think it's like a hundred dollars installed and maybe uh, fifteen or twenty dollars a month. That's uh, I, there's some other other products out in the marketplace like that that are similar. I think Peak, uh, the Best Buy offering, is somewhere in that price range as well. So it's evolving, you know, it's, it's, it's a very dynamic marketplace and I think that you'll see a lot of innovation on how these solutions are packaged and, and the, um, the retail offerings that they're actually being, um, being offered in. The, another thing about these non-monitored solutions is that they, in most terms, they don't require contracts. So the, the traditional model for a home security system as well as these new interactive home security solutions that have home, on, home automation generally require a two to three year contract. But with the, the non-monitored version, um, the cost of equipment is much less for, the, um, for the, the company offering that. So they, in most terms, they take away the, um, the contract there. So it makes it easier for the consumer to adopt. Less of a friction point, if you will. Great question. Other questions? Yes, sir. There, there are multiple options. The, 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 the more prominent solution that happens in the market today is that it's going through the cloud and being broadcasted back out to the user interface. The, one of the reasons that's very important from our perspective is, is that we need to make sure that that video is secure, that it's encrypted. And if we can take it, we can, we can uh, we're in charge of the path that that video goes out of the home and we can make sure that that video is encrypted in a way that is, makes it a very secure solution for the end user. There are other solutions out there that don't necessarily follow those same protocols, maybe less secure in the marketplace, um, and there are, pro there are some more local video solutions that don't actually go through the cloud that are more local, uh, but the predominant one is through the cloud. Did that answer your question? Which is, yeah, a lot of you are saying, well, that, that's a bandwidth issue, right? Well, it's, it can be. The, 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 the funny thing about video cameras, um, again, this is what consumers have told us. When you market video as part of a, a smart home solution or a home security solution, the very first thing the customer thinks is, oh, good, I'll use that camera to catch the bad guy. Well, guess what? you don't have many bad guys coming into your home all the time. And what people end up using those, those video cameras for is for family management. Knowing when my kids got home from school, knowing when the pet sitter arrived, seeing things that are going on in your home when you get a notification so you can verify what's going on in the home. And, and from that perspective, there's, there's tr generally not a lot of, um, you're not watching video a whole lot during the day. What's actually happening is you're getting you know, a minute or two of video feeds whenever you want them, or you have your system set up so that when something happens, the front door opens, it shoots a 30 second video clip, stores it in the cloud, and then I have access to that data whenever I want to. So if you're running a bunch of video cameras in the home and you're, you're streaming them all the time and that stream is going to the cloud with, with you know, 24 hour video storage, yeah, that's a bandwidth issue. What solutions that are in the marketplace today, at least for the mass market consumer, not a whole lot of bandwidth. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Most, 
it's either or. From our perspective, speaking to eye control, um, most what, what, the model usually works like this. We get a service provider up and running. We, get, we, we support market trials uh, up to a point where it makes sense for them to take, this in, take the software into their own environment. And then we, we are no longer hosting it. We're just licensing the software to them. Um, most of our most of our tier one com uh, tier one partners are licensing our software. There's a few that we still host it for. Yes, sir. Absolutely, yes. So, and, and not just speaking for our solutions, in most of the solutions that are out there in the marketplace have some mechanism of which, um, in, which automatically sends the end user some type of notification that, that uh, broadband is down or, or, or there's something wrong with this, this system. Um, the, in, in the, the, um, all of the solutions that we offer that our service provider and home security companies offer all have cellular emergency backup. And some, it's, uh, some of the home security solutions are actually security prominent out of the home. There's, it's not connected to broadband. But the, the, the reason that we have that is that if you're buying a life safety solution, you need to always be secure. So if, the, if there's any break in connectivity, outside of the home from broadband it automatically shifts over to cellular. Um, the, in, 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 that per, in that instance, there's some features that won't work. You, can't, you won't be able to stream live video in your home when your broadband is down because it just is not gonna have the bandwidth. But everything else works normally and you still have that, that connection to a central monitoring station that you need for a home security system. Um, those non-monitored version, non-monitored solutions primarily just run off of broadband and if something happens, you'll get a notification that says your broadband is down or you're, there, you, there's an issue with your system and it lets you know what's going on. I find out how many times, well, I won't talk about my broadband provider, but uh, my Piper system, uh, which it's an eye control solution, um, non-monitored home security and home automation solution, when broadband goes down, I automatically get a uh, push notification that tells me that it's down. So I know then that, okay, I'm not gonna be able to go get live video feed, but I also know that my broadband service is down and I need to go get that fixed. So it helps a couple of different purposes. Any other questions? Great, thank you guys very much for your time. I appreciate it.